Well, we are going to go ahead and get started. Hi, Samadeo, because um, we have a lot to learn, but I want to do a little bit of an introduction first uh, First off. So once again, continue to let us know where you're joining us from by typing your city, state, or country into the chat box. It's also something really good for us as a nonprofit because we get to see how far our reach is. So it's really important. It's also fun, though, to see where everybody's coming from. And we're going to get going. My name is Mel. Welcome. Welcome to Banny Tree Women's Collective. We are a 501c3 based out of the San Francisco Bay Peninsula. And I am once again in my office here in Menlo Park. And I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you to this space because this is an, inc an inclusive space. This is a safe space. And what I mean by that is we're all here on different learning journeys, different health journeys, different needs, and different places in our lives. And we're all here seeking one thing, and that's experience and knowledge and access to wellness. And that leads me to why Banyan even came about. And that's because those of us at Banyan, we believe that access to wellness, choice, experience, it should be just a human right for all of us. And unfortunately, it's not. But this is what Banyan is trying to do, is to give you all access and choice so you can figure out for your individual journey how you can heal yourself, how you can have a healthier and happier life. And what we ask in return is for you to share your knowledge, for you to work in your community, for you to share it with your family, to share it with your friends, let them know about us and come and join our classes. That's it. We just want to take care of you. So welcome. Thank you for taking some time today to take care of yourself. As you can tell, we have a pretty large group. We're going to have people strolling in. I will continue to let them in. You do have the ability to unmute yourself and ask a question. I just ask, please make sure you put yourself back on mute if you unmute yourself, because as much as we adore you, we don't want to hear everything that's going on in the background, which is usually like dogs barking or I don't know. It happens to the best of us. So just make sure you stay on mute. We will have a Q&A at the end. And keep in mind that this is a two-part class series. Now, if you cannot make the second class, don't worry. We will record it so you can listen to a replay. But we do really strongly advise that you show. And please make sure that you sign up. Once again, we are a nonprofit. And we have to track everything to show our metrics and how we're reaching out to community. So we need you to sign up for the second class. And without further ado, I want to bring in Chantal. She is one of our favorite practitioners. The second class, Amy, is next Wednesday. Same bat time, same bat channel. Okay. Um, Chantal is from Bonjour Belly. She is residing out of Oakland. And we are so happy every time that we have her here with us. And she and I both um, love this, this book. We love everything about it. And I know the first time I read this, I was just like, oh my gosh, so many things that we've been told were wrong. And we are on the cusp of understanding what our brains can do and that we can heal our brains at every stage and every age. So please, everybody, welcome Chantal. I'm going to pass this off. And replace the spotlight. There you are, lady. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, if I haven't met you before, you haven't been to one of my workshops. I am Chantal. And as Mel mentioned, I'm in Oakland, California, which is also unceded um, Ohlone and Chechenyo land. Um, I just want to thank Banyan Tree Women's Collective so much for hosting me again for doing a workshop. I absolutely love teaching and I very much appreciate being supported by Banyan Tree and the community of all of you who showed up. So thank you all for being here. Um, so yeah, I was just really enamored by this book um, that Mel already showed you guys. It's called the the neurogenesis diet and lifestyle and my best friend gifted this to me back in 2016 and then there's so much in here um i would love for this to be kind of like a cliff notes for you from this book but really you should all just go 
by the book. Um, I am, you know, going to go through a lot of information that is in there coupled with like information that I've gathered from being a holistic nutritionist and um, just other like studies that I have read and learning about healthy fats and unhealthy fats and all sorts of things that impact our body, mind, and spirit. So that might sound weird because we're going to be talking about the brain today, but you will also come to see that it's more than just like a physical component or aspect of us that's in our body. Um, yes, um, next slide. Oh yeah, so funny thing, Mercury is in retrograde. If you guys don't know about astrological stuff, um, we're kind of having a funny technical difficulty, but we're making it work. <laughs> Mel has my slide deck and she has to go through it for me because I got a new laptop and for some reason, Zoom isn't letting me share my screen, but we figured it out. You're still gonna see the slides, but you're gonna see, or you're gonna hear me say, next slide, please. <laughs> And um, just to let everybody know, um, there's a million different ways you can get the book, but I just, here's a, a link for a used book. I love buying used books from small book retailers to keep them in business. So um, you can get a copy of it for as little as $13 right there. All right, let me share the screen. <laughs> and I will be the secretary as well. Is it up there? Yes, I can see it. So that means everybody else can. So yeah, I do want to just point out um, that the information that I'm going to be talking about today in the presentation is provided for educational purposes only. Um, don't take any of this as a diagnosis, treatment, or prescription, or a substitute for professional medical advice. Um, so if you need any advice in that regard, please seek out your physician. All right. Next slide. So yes, Oops, one more back. I'm Chantal, <laughs> you already know that. Um, I'm a certified holistic nutritionist. I'm also a certified Ayurvedic health counselor, yoga nidra instructor. I have my BS in nutrition from Cal Poly and also a food science minor. I do wanna note here that we're talking about the brain and I am not a psychologist. I'm not a you know, neurological doctor. Um, so please keep all of that in mind. Um, I'm a home farmer and gardener in my backyard. I'm an adopted dog mom of two old, old lady dogs. And I'm just a lover of all things relating to health and wellness, spiritual and emotional growth. I love live music and I'm also diving deep into learning and applying Jyotish, which is also known as Vedic or Eastern astrology. So let's get into stuff. So what we're gonna go through today is talk a little bit about the human brain, what's it comprised of. Um, we're gonna talk about what neurogenesis even is, why should you care? We're gonna talk about the top four foods and nutrients that stimulate neurogenesis. And then we're gonna talk about some things that hinder neurogenesis. And then we'll end with, learning what is encapsulated within a neurohealthy diet. Next slide. All right. So the human brain, we have three main parts of the human brain. So the first part is often referred to as the reptilian brain, um, also the, the brain stem. And this is the first part of our brain that develops. So this develops while we're in the womb and it contains our cerebellum and connects to our spinal cord, which is the brain stem. And this is the most primitive part of our brain. And it is referred to as the area for fight or flight. So all of these sort of innate responses that we have within us stem from or are activated from this part of our brain. So think about things that we do without even, you know, like telling a specific organ to do it. Breathing, blinking, just our reflexes, um, our heartbeat, 
digestion, and even reproduction. So this part of our brain also uh, is what contains our parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. And so when we think about if we're disrupted by something all of a sudden, so like if we're driving along on a freeway and, you know, minding our own business, and then somebody just cuts over into our lane and cuts us off, you know, our reflexes jump in and that really puts us in that fight or flight sort of reaction. Those reflexes get triggered and that is when our, our, reptilian brain gets activated. So if we're constantly activating this part of our brain, like there's a constant amount of stress or trigger that's causing this type of response, then this is going to add like stress over and over to this part of our brain um, and begin to wear it down. And on the opposite end of things, if we're constantly not activating this part of our brain, we can end up feeling very lethargic and slow, just these very like heavy qualities, right? Um, so we really want to be in a state of balance, but we'll talk more about that in part two of this series. Okay, the next part of our brain to develop is called the mammalian brain or the limbic system. So this is really where the seat of our emotion and learning is housed. So this is also where we begin to evaluate everything. You know, we kind of take in everything with our senses and we're determining whether this is pleasurable or this is painful. We like it or we don't like it. And really our survival is based on being able to stick to more things that are pleasurable and repeating those happenings and occurrences more regularly and staying away from things that cause us pain or distress. So that's what happens in our mammalian part of our brain. And then the last or the last part of our brain to be formed is the neomammalian complex, which is also referred to as our cerebral neocortex. And the reason why you see neo in here is because this has, you know, this is one of the like newer discovered parts of our brain to develop. And this part of our brain really sets us apart from other mammals and distinctly creates us as human. Okay. This area of our brain is responsible for things like our ability to reason, to speak, um, our verbal understanding of things, the ability to analyze and problem solve, as well as just, you know, daydream and be creative. And this is also the seat of our self-awareness. So there is a lot that is happening in our brain all the time. Like you sitting and just hearing everything that I'm saying and taking it in, you're probably analyzing things. You might feel your senses. Like, is it warm in the room? Are you drinking something that's like making you hotter or energized? There is so many synapses that are firing in our brain all at once. This is really like an immense part of who we are and how we show up like in this world. And it's very, very fascinating. And as I said, I'm not like a brain surgeon. I'm not a, you know, brain doctor, but we are going to dive into some really easy, tangible takeaways for you to be able to build a better brain. Next slide. All right. So what is neurogenesis? Neurogenesis is the process of creating new brain cells. And you can actually do this at any age. So you may have heard or read or learned at some point in your life that, you know, our brains fully develop by our mid twenties. 
Um, and then we kind of feel like it's all downhill from there, right? Because we thought that we can't grow new brain cells and any anything that had already developed and was there, that's all we had. But more recent studies and research from scientists have actually discovered that we can continue to grow new brain cells at any point in our life. And obviously, like, if you're starting to do this, you know, follow a neuro healthy diet and stay away from things that decrease neurogenesis, you're going to have a more healthy, vibrant quality of life for the rest of your life. But just because you're, you know, over 50 or something doesn't mean you can't start now. You are going to have like a better chance at building and um, keeping more neurons alive if you start sooner. Um, but it doesn't mean you can't start if you're at, you know, an older age, don't be deterred. Like nothing's going to happen because changing your diet and changing things in your life will actually make an impact. And you want to do this because research has shown that higher rates of neurogenesis are associated with higher cognitive function, having a better memory, learning faster a better emotional vitality and resilience, which is great, right? Protection from stress, anxiety, and depression, elevated immunity, and just enhanced overall brain function. So when we think of all of these things, like who wouldn't want or need all of those things? So we need to focus on like a twofold situation. We wanna focus on growing new brain cells, and then we also need to increase their survival rate because we can do things to grow new brain cells, but then if we're not, you know, helping them stay alive, then it kind of becomes a moot point. So how are we going to do this? We want to increase something that is called BDNF. Next slide, please. All right, so just a couple terms that you're going to hear throughout um, this presentation. Antioxidants, they are molecules that neutralize free radicals. And when we have free radicals that are in greater quantity than our antioxidants, then we are in a state of oxidative stress. Okay, BDNF is that thing that I said we want to increase. And BDNF stands for brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And this is the main signal that turns on neurogenesis. Free radicals are also referred to as reactive oxygen species. And these are unstable molecules that have at least one unpaired electron. And therefore, they're capable of creating a downward spiral that leads to oxidative stress. Um, so if you're not totally familiar with that, that sounds too like chemistry-ish, don't worry about it. Um, but you can always come back to this or ask questions at the end. And then a neuron is an actual brain cell. So that's what we're, we're working on is growing new brain cells. Okay, the quality of your life is correlated to your rate of neurogenesis. Read that one more time and let that sink in. The overall quality of your whole life is correlated to your rate of neurogenesis. Okay, so now, I mentioned that our brain is so vast and so huge, but we want to talk about more than just the physical aspect of our brain. We are gonna talk about a holistic approach to neurogenesis and living a more healthy and vibrant life and having a full quality. So we need to take into consideration four aspects, the body, mind, heart, and spirit. So the body obviously is the most gross, uh, gross dense plane. It's the physical world, right? It's where we sense everything. And this is also what our brain is doing too. Our heart 
is then the emotional level, our feelings and our emotional brains expand when we live mostly in a positive emotional state and we're engaging in loving situations, in intimacy and safe connection with friends, family, colleagues, whoever it be. The mind is our mental capacity. It's our ability to learn new things and we wanna engage both our right and left hemispheres and we can do this through reading, problem solving, storytelling, even just listening to new music or being in new novel places outside. These all stimulate neurogenesis. And then last, our spirit, connecting to our true nature of being a soul, having a human experience. Spiritual practices like mindfulness or pranayama, practicing compassion, even prayer, these all increase the brain's ability to renew itself and grow. So we want to take a four-pronged approach to this, but today we're going to be focusing mostly on just the body. So we must honor and engage all four levels of our brain and being, right? Okay, so the four main foods and nutrients that we want to increase. This is numero uno, blueberries. I'm sure you guys have read plenty of articles in like Self Magazine and Cosmo or whatever you're reading from the health food store. Blueberries, they're loaded with polyphenols, um, specifically anthocyanidins, which is a type of antioxidant. And I talked about earlier how an antioxidant is something that basically can cancel out a free radical, and this helps reduce oxidative stress, therefore creating an environment healthy for neurogenesis and keeping new brain cells alive. So eating blueberries helps to protect our brain against cognitive decline, inflammation, oxidation, radiation and glycation. So you want to aim to eat about one cup of fresh blueberries a day, but if you don't have any fresh blueberries around, you can totally use blueberry, blueberry extract um, because this has been shown to be just as effective. Uh, frozen is also an option you can go from an Ayurvedic standpoint. I never recommend people to eat frozen or cold foods out of the refrigerator. So if you buy frozen, you could just let them thaw. So I do want to also point out that cooking has been shown to diminish um, antioxidant and polyphenol activity. So, you know, your blueberry muffin or blueberry pie is not going to yield you the same benefits as eating just the fresh blueberries. Um, so aim for fresh blueberries if you can. Um, and in the U.S., we're pretty lucky you can get them between May and October. And um, like I said, frozen is also a good route to go. And you can just let them thaw out in a bowl. Um, but yeah, blueberries also protect against brain injury, stroke, um, and neurotoxins. And they've also been shown to protect against uh, diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and MS, among other neuro neurodegenerative diseases. Next slide. All right, so now we have green tea. Green tea is the second on our list, and this also contains a high amount of polyphenols, phytochemicals and different vitamins. So EGCG is epigallocatechin gallate. It also has rutine, L-theanine, which is a, an amino acid and quercetin among other compounds. It, green tea is really loaded with a lot of great stuff and it has more benefits than just being a great food for neurogenesis. Um, it's also linked to decreasing stress, cancer prevention. This is in that form of antioxidant, fat loss, um, immunity improvement, and cardiovascular benefits. It's also been linked to slowing the aging process. 
So green tea, there's many types of green tea. Um, and I know we've all heard of matcha green tea, which is really revered for being, you know, it has like an umami flavor. It's very like rich in polyphenols because of the way that it's grown and where it's grown. And when you're consuming matcha, it is like the ground up tea leaves into a powder. Um, so matcha is great. Regular green tea is great. All of them improve your working memory, which is one of the most difficult functions to increase. So whether you're having matcha or you're having just a regular green tea, you want to aim for around 300 to 1000 milligrams daily. But so that ends up being around like three to 10 cups of green tea. However, you will hear later on in this that we don't want to be consuming that much caffeine. So you can look for caffeine free extracts and you want to look on the label for at least like a minimum of 40 percent of the polyphenols, the EG, CG and the catechins. Okay, because drinking three to 10 cups of green tea inevitably like you will get caffeine because it's just inherently in green tea. Um, and actually matcha green tea has a higher amount of caffeine comparatively to other green teas. So be mindful if you are somebody who drinks matcha to maybe not drink three cups um, because it does have a higher uh, caffeine content. It has like around 19 to 44 milligrams per gram compared to a regular green tea, which is more like between like 11 to, to 24 uh, milligrams. Um, Chantal, yeah, when you're, yeah. Chantal, Leslie is asking, um, what about organic decaf green tea? So I would recommend if you can buy anything organic because that's within your budget and your means, do it. If you can't afford organic, um, there is this website that you can look for uh, that is, why is it slipping in my mind? Well, you can look up the Dirty Dozen. I don't know, this doesn't include typically teas. Um, and sorry, what was the last part of that question? Organic and then, oh, caffeine free. Yeah, if you can find caffeine free green tea, then you can certainly go that route. Um, and then you can, again, also look for the caffeine free extracts. So just make sure that you're looking on the label that it's still containing um, the, the polyphenols because those active compounds, the catechins and the EGCG, um, is like those are the crucial compounds that studies have been done on that specifically increase uh, BDN, BDNF and are great for neurogenesis. And I just want to note too, when you're making a uh, green tea, you want to make sure that you're using boiling water and steep between like five to 10 minutes. Um, and you want to consume your green tea in between meals because green tea, um, specifically the EGCG will bind, has the ability to bind with specific minerals and proteins, which will then make absorption of those proteins and minerals more difficult. And like, you want to get all the benefits from the things that you're eating and you don't want the green tea to counteract that. So have that in between your meals and not like with a meal. All right, the third food is, well, it's not a food, it's a nutrient to increase, is omega-3 fatty acids. So if you think about um, if, your house, if your brain was a house and your house crumbled down, what would you wanna rebuild your house with? Omega-3 fatty acids. <laughs> um, Omega-3 fatty acids are found in cold water fish. So salmon, sardines, mackerel, herring, tuna. Um, and some of those, the smaller fish, like the herring, mackerel, sardines, you can find canned and are excellent. They're very wallet friendly. And because they're smaller fish, they um, 
you know, you don't have the same mercury concerns that you would with larger fish. So I'm a huge proponent for pushing people to eat canned sardines, mackerel, and herring and choose bone in skin on for the added nutrients. Um, and if you can, you know, you can buy it in water, you can buy it in olive oil, um, but you don't need any other additives. Fine, if you wanna buy your sardines and tomato sauce, go ahead, but you know, you don't, you just, you just need the fish. You're also gonna find omega-3 fatty acids in pastured animal products. Okay, so pastured is also synonymous oftentimes with grass fed. It just is referring to your animals are living freely on the pasture as they would in their normal life if a farmer didn't own them. Okay. And this is important because what they eat, you also eat. So if they're eating like, you know, if they're chickens and they're eating their omnivorous diet, they're eating some, you know, seeds and some grubs, um, they're getting the normal diet that they should be getting in their natural habitat. And this is really important um, because when we compare the health benefits of pasture raised animal products versus conventionally raised or feedlot animals, it's vastly different. <clears throat> Flax seeds are also a great source, chia seeds, hemp seeds, walnuts, and um, algae or algal oil is really a, a key um, supplement for vegans or vegetarians to get the benefits of omega-3 fatty acids that they wouldn't be getting from all of these animal products that I just listed. Um, so omega-3 fatty acids dramatically increase neurogenesis and BD BDNF levels. Like I will talk a little bit more about fat as we move on. I love talking about fat. I did a whole class already with banyan tree on fats. If you guys want it again, say so, because I'll totally do a repeat of it. Um, so yeah, something else to know is if you haven't been consuming any of these things that I've listed that are great sources of omega-3s, um, you're gonna want to aim to eat like three to five grams of fish oil, your take a fish oil supplement daily, um, or four to six grams per day if you're suffering from depression or inflammation, pain, weight gain, or hormone imbalance. Um, and if you are buying fish oil supplements rather than eating food sources for omega-3 fatty acids, make sure that you're looking for molecularly distilled and high amounts of DHA and EPA. Okay, so omega-3s are linked to increasing neurite, neurite growth, enhancing neuronal cell transmission, increased neurotransmitter release, and protects against inflammation and oxidation. So again, like you hear these word um, protecting against inflammation and oxidation. This oxidative stress um, is a, a real main proponent of the aging process and neurogenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. And Alzheimer's has actually been called the, uh, why can't I remember? Look, I need to eat more omega-3s, my memory. <laughs> um, uh, but omega-3s are also linked to um, showing the ability to heal our brain and repair our brain when you've been under uh, traumatic brain injuries as well. So like I said, these are the building blocks of your brain. So you want to eat it to have a really solid foundation, right? You want a good solid fatty brain. Your brain is 60% fat, so make it good fat. <laughs> All right, next slide. All right, so the fourth nutrient we want to increase is curcumin. Curcumin is the active compound that's found in turmeric root, and it's also what gives it um, that really bright, distinct yellow color that turmeric is known for and will stain your cutting board and many other things. It's a powerful antioxidant and it's a, it's well known for being anti-inflammatory. Um, there have also been studies done that correlate it to reducing beta amyloid and plaque formation, which is associated with the aging process. Um, and it's also helps with improving synaptic function. So the synapses are um, 
these biochemical spaces in between the neurons where um, communication happens from cell to cell, from neuron to neuron. Um, and including curcumin is a really great way to protect yourself from Alzheimer's disease, which I think a lot of people just assume like, oh, in our older age, it's just kind of inherent that like, we're all gonna kind of have some sort of like brain degeneration, right? Like a high percentage of us will go through um, a lot of that and maybe tend towards Alzheimer, but like that does not need to be your fate. Um, and curcumin has also been linked to being a strong antidepressant. Um, so if you're wanting to include curcumin into your diet, you want to aim for between 200 to 1,000 milligrams per day. And 200 milligrams per a study is about a teaspoon. Um, but curcumin is actually very difficult to absorb. So adding some black pepper or piperine, which is a pepper extract or lecithin is gonna help aid in absorption. So if you're looking for lecithin, you can, you can buy uh, supplements that have curcumin in it or you can have turmeric root powder with black pepper. Um, but if you're buying supplements, then you might as well look for one that has uh, either if you're staying away from soy, you can look for sunflower lecithin and you can take these in capsule form. So there's all sorts of ways that you can find supplements if you're not going to be getting these from actual whole foods. My suggestion is always whole foods first um, and then supplements if you need it or having problems with like getting enough from your diet um, or just in a very like lower distressed state where supplementation is necessary. Next slide. All right, so now we talked about the four foods to consume, and now we're going to talk about some things that you want to avoid, things that are, you know, poisons to neurogenesis. So we want to cut back on the high sugar stuff and carbs. So anything on your product like ingredient list that has added sugars on it, like begin to cut that food down, you know? And you wanna choose carbohydrates that are packed with fiber. So choose berries, broccoli, carrots, bok choy, kale, string beans, the list of vegetables could go on and on. Um, and be wary of fruits that actually just inherently have a really high fructose content. So examples would be bananas, grapes, lychee, mangoes, peaches, plums, persimmons. Sorry, mom. I know you love persimmons and it's about to be that season. Um, and also be aware of dried fruits. Dried fruits inherently have all of their moisture sucked out of them. And then what's left, it's just like really concentrated, like pure sugar. Um, so fresh fruits are best. And if you're somebody who likes to consume a lot of fruit juice, you're going to kind of want to cut that back too, because that's really devoid of the fiber that we're talking about. Um, this even includes carrot juice. So eat a carrot instead. Um, another big poison for neurogenesis is unhealthy fats. So what are unhealthy fats? There's so much here. Trans fats, hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated fats. So look on your ingredient list because if you have partially hydrogenated fats um, in something you're buying, it, it will be listed. Avoid the fake fats, margarine, vegetable shortening, butter alternatives, refined vegetable oils, unrefined vegetable oils in clear bottles because these have a um, higher potential for oxidation, which you've already learned is bad news bears. Um, and again, reduce the amount of conventional grown or grain fed beef um, because cows are not supposed to just eat grains. Farmers feed them grain to fatten them up because a fat cow equals more money for them, but it's not good for us. Okay. And then you want to avoid certain fish that are higher in mercury. And then when you're cooking, make sure that you're cooking at lower temperatures um, and avoid eating like really overcharred burnt meats. 
Okay, I'm going to dive a little bit into hydrogenation and what trans fats are, because I know some people are like, I've heard of trans fats, I know they're bad, what are they? All right, saturated fats, good fats, butter, real butter, lard comes from an animal, tallow also comes from an animal. These are straight chains. There's a little bit of a science lesson here. There's straight chains of carbon and hydrogen molecules and they pack together really nicely, which is why these saturated fats are solid at room temperature. Polyunsaturated fats examples include these vegetable oils like corn, soy, safflower. You need a catalyst, a nickel catalyst, plus hydrogen gas to make this liquid vegetable oil solid at room temperature. So basically this is how you're, you're getting like earth balance, your like soy butter type stuff. The hydrogenation process trans, transforms a unsaturated oil, like a liquidy oil into a packable molecule through this chemical process, which is unnatural. We don't want it. Next slide. So just going to show you really quickly that if you look at the saturated molecule, there's no double bonds. You see this kind of like zigzaggy action. This is what a saturated, like, you know, an animal fat typically looks like. Um, and then when you look at an unsaturated trans fat, there's this double bond now, and the configuration is different. See how the hydrogens are on opposite sides of the, of the uh, carbon? And then if you look at the one right next to it, the unsaturated cis fat, normally it is like this. The hydrogens are on the same side. So when you go through this hydrogenation process to make a trans fat, you alter the chemical structure of it to make this liquid a solid. And that is not good. Our body doesn't know what to do with it. So sorry for all of the vegans and vegetarians in here that don't want to eat butter, but the reality of the situation is these processed, these highly processed oils are just, our body doesn't know how, how to deal with them and they're not healthy for our brain or neurogenesis. All right, so more things we want to avoid overeating. So if you've heard of intermittent fasting, keep it going. If you haven't heard of it, you can start slow, but intermittent fasting or like shooting for a larger window of time that you're not eating is really, really beneficial for our body. It almost puts our body in like a short-term stress. And during this time of short-term stress, we increase neurogenesis. So if you can have an early dinner and a late breakfast and aim for at least an eight hour gap between eating, then you're in a good start. Um, you wanna also avoid inflammatory foods, uh, fried foods, things that are highly processed. We already talked about low quality oils like the highly processed ones, soy, sunflower, corn, canola, all trans fats, um, refined grains, sugars, Again, that conventionally raised um, or feedlot raised animal products. This includes meat, eggs, dairy, and alcohol. So I know the occasional glass of red wine might be a nice way to wind down, um, but alcohol, even a moderate alcohol consumption uh, has been shown to reduce neurogenesis by 40%, which is like a pretty big percent. So if you can avoid it, then I would switch to a different night cap. Like some tea, maybe not green tea because there's caffeine in there, but herbal tea. <laughs> All right, another one we have on the list that we wanna like cut down on is caffeine. So we talked about this earlier. That's why the green tea extracts with that are caffeine free um, are a great route to go. So if you drink a lot right now, aim to just cut it back. And if you really don't drink very much, maybe just try to not drink caffeine at all. And if you're going through this phase of trying to cut back on caffeine and you're having a hard time because you're somebody who needs this energy to, you know, do your work or do your errands or just like be awake and live your life, 
Um, try supplementing with B vitamin B5 and B12 because this will help provide you with some more natural energy during that time period. Um, and something else we want to look out for is deficiencies in vitamins A, B1, and B3, and zinc. So some foods that you want to increase eating are carrots. Don't drink the juice, just eat the carrots. Um, beet greens are just green leafy, bean, green leafy vegetables in general, spinach, eggs. And again, if I'm talking about any animal products, eggs, pastured pork and beef, um, try to buy pasture raised quality animal products. Um, beans, lentils, fresh peas, Brussels sprouts, liver is really great, mushrooms, so many things, but you really want to make sure that you're eating a lot of whole foods to get all of these um, nutrients in and not be deficient in any area. All right, so overall, a general neurohealthy diet looks like something that includes a lot of healthy fats with a high focus on fats from omega that are from omega-3 fatty acids um, that are anti-inflammatory, low glycemic. I know we didn't go over what low glycemic means, but I talked about increasing carbohydrates that have a lot of fiber because um, high glycemic stuff is like those fruits that are really high in the fructose content. We want a high fiber diet and we want antioxidant rich. So everything in the top four foods were antioxidant rich, right? So blueberries, the green tea, the curcumin, um, and the omega-3 fatty acids. So all of these are things that are part of a neuro healthy diet. Whoops, back one slide. Oh. Sorry, you can, I just wanted to ask one question. What is one thing that you can do starting tonight or tomorrow that you can do to increase neurogenesis? Type it in the chat box. Next slide. So I really buzz through that very quickly. <laughs> these, these one hour presentations go by really, really fast. Um, but yeah, I mean, I hope to see you next Wednesday, but this is just my information. Um, if you want to connect with me, um, you can email me at hello at bonjourbelly.com. My website, I am working on building right now. So if you want to sign up, just shoot me an email and then I can notify you when it's fully launched and you will get 10% off my new fall product line, which includes teas and Ayurvedic spice blends. You can follow me on Instagram or Facebook. And um, I'm also starting a six week intro to Ayurveda wellness program in early November. Um, and you guys get 10% off if you register for this course by Friday. So you can register by emailing me. And then I get to work with Banyan Tree again. They're going to host me. So we talked a lot about healthy fats. You know, I'm super passionate about fat, really good fat, saturated fats, high quality animal fats. And we are going to make ghee together. And ghee is clarified butter. Um, and we're going to cook along. So you'll learn how to make ghee. Basically all you need is good quality butter, um, a heavy bottomed pot, a fine mesh strainer, and a clean jar that you can store your ghee in. So we'll be doing that on Wednesday, November 10th, also from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys can join me for that. Um, and then, yeah, I'm also available and open to work one-on-one -on -one for Ayurvedic health counseling and holistic nutrition. So if you're interested, I do free discovery calls so you can shoot me an email to connect. 
Wonderful. And I want to jump in before, um, and Chantal, maybe you want to look at the chat box. Um, there are some questions. And so next Wednesday is part two, and it will be at six o'clock the same time. So please make sure to register. And we are going to raffle away two of these books. So if you show up, we're going to pull a roster, and then we're going to do a raffle at the end of class. So we can get you reading and um, get you connected to this. I do want to share um, that we have a great class this weekend with Patty Lou. She is a licensed um, herbalist. She does um, Western and Eastern. Um, she is also owns a skincare company, but she's coming to talk strictly from the lens of as an herbalist with immune health. And so that is going to be a really great class. We already have a lot of signups. It's Saturday from 11 to 12. So you can, you know, make your brunch and she is going to go over immune health support from an herbalist lens. She's also going to teach you how to make fire cider. So that will be exciting. The other thing I want to share with you guys is on the 18th, which is next Monday, we have our information night about our upcoming level one Reiki certification. And so we part with this practitioner, you do need to show for the intro class or watch the replay. Once you understand what's expected, we will send out an agreement to each person that wants to take the level one. And then level one Reiki will happen from all throughout November to the first week of December. As somebody who's invested a lot of time and money in my own Reiki training, this is quite a gift that um, can be really helpful for community, not only for yourself, but you'll also be able to practice on your loved ones and, and help them. So those are two things that um, are coming up. And then of course, next Wednesday, we're back for part two with Chantal. Somebody was asking um, Chantal, what did you expect next week? Sorry, I was going through the questions. Um, okay, so next week we are going to dive more into those other aspects. So the emotional, mental, and spiritual part of lifestyle tips that we can incorporate to um build new brain cells. So yeah, as I mentioned, we, we talked and focused more on like the body and the diet today. I mean, we didn't talk about exercise, so we'll talk a little bit about movement. Um, but yeah, it'll be the other aspects that we'll be discussing next time. Wonderful. And yes, um, so classes, and this leads me to my last little part here before we can let you guys ask some questions if you want to ask direct um, to Chantel. Um, then I said, ask, what is the cost? Um, the, our classes are free. And so what, like I said, what we ask is that you come educate yourself, work on your own healing, your own health, and you share that information and you pass it along and you help others in your community be healthy. Now we are a 501c3, so we do gladly accept any donation, any donation. And you can do that by donating on our page. Um, another way that you can help us is through Amazon Smile. If you go to Amazon, your Amazon account, you're going to choose Banyan Tree Women's Collective as your 501c3 of choice. And then it's just pennies on different purchases, but all those pennies from a lot of people add up to help us. Um, and those are other ways that you can help us and support. But we're here, we're here to serve you. So please show up to class. Um, please sign up. and. Um, you know, we really hope that we can all see you next Wednesday. Does anybody have any specific questions for Chantel? You can unmute yourself and talk. Or is there I, want, I wanted to answer one. Somebody was asking why I talked about using boiling water. Um, anywhere but for, for green tea, you can do between like 170 to 180 um, should be fine. It doesn't need to be a rolling boil. And I know not everybody uh, has those cool 
kettles that have like, I've seen these, they are very cool, but they have little specific temperature buttons that you can press on them because if you are the type to drink a lot of different teas, specific teas like white teas, red teas, green teas, black teas want to be brewed at different um, temperature levels. So you're right. We don't want like, it needs to be hot, not warm. Maybe I shouldn't have said like boiling um, because it certainly doesn't need to be as like a rolling boil um, which black tea could withstand, but um, uh, green tea should be fine between 170 and 180. And then if yeah, you do, yeah, I red or white. link in the chat with um, a re recommended steep times. It's a chart. Oh, yeah. you. you can look at that there. And then also, I am one of those people currently looking at a fellow teapot, um, fellow <laughs> the brand, because it tells you exactly. A fellow is one of the best brands out there. Now, remember that um, there's all sorts of um, Amazon days and um, different holidays coming up. So if you can, you know, much like the Instant Pot when everybody was waiting for a, a sale to come, those sales are going to start happening. Yes, fellow teapots are excellent and they give you all the different brewing times or you can go and get um, a hard can. I use a hard candy, um, making hard candy thermometer right now. And that one will easily tell you your temperatures too. And then just, you know, get your steep times and put them close by because yeah, you can, you can burn tea. <laughs> you can, it is possible. Yeah. And then somebody asked about you uh, doing sun tea. You can actually do sun tea and still reap antioxidant benefits because the sun will, you know, is like, it's going to warm, it's going to warm your, your jar of tea um, enough and should be out there for a couple hours. Like normally when you make sun tea, like two to four hours is a good time frame. And then um, I, I, I see Mary, um, I can eat blueberries, but I cannot give up caffeine. And I just want to interject here. So <laughs> A lot of times our job is to come and sometimes it can sound like doom doom oh don't do this don't do that so we're here as practitioners to share knowledge with the clear understanding that no one is there perfect doesn't exist right and we all have different needs we all have different uh triggers we all have different sensations and connections to certain things we all do our best, right? We are forever in this beta version of ourselves to try to figure out what works. So by no means do you need to write everything down and, and you have to figure out how to each thing. But now you know, you know, and you have some information. And so you're going to take that information and you're going to use it to the best of your ability that works for your life, the way that your life is right now. And that may look different next month. Next month, maybe you're like, I'm going to give up caffeine. I don't know what mad men would do that, but go ahead and do it, right? <laughs> Try it. <laughs> but please don't think that it's an end all be all. Like yeah. this is just information to help you be healthier and to make different decisions and different choices. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Do we have any other questions? Oh, we love you too, Amy. Thank you for the support. All right. Chantal, thank oh wait a minute. I've heard oh, I lost it. I've heard it's good to mix up eating habits throughout the day. Raw cooked and recently heard about juicing meals. Do you agree with that diet? Mine is the carrot. Wait, where was that one? It's it's pretty Oh, it's the last one. Oh, uh, good to mix up eating habits throughout the day. Raw cooked and recently juicing meals. Uh from an Ayurvedic standpoint. And I will just preface that that's, you know, where I'm coming from. Um, digestion is of the utmost importance. And if you can't digest what you're taking in, you're going to have a really hard time assimilating it and metabolizing it and having all of its little components become a part of you. So typically it is very difficult for all people to digest just raw food all the time. That doesn't mean you can't have any raw food, but I would say the majority of your food should be cooked. And Ayurveda also advises us to eat with the seasons. And since we are in fall, unless you're in the Southern hemisphere of the world, we're in fall right now. So it's cold, it's dry, it's mobile, it's windy. 
Um, so cooked foods are going to be even more important and raw foods are going to want to be a smaller percentage of your meal and you can totally have raw and cooked foods at the same meal. So um, if you like to put, you know, like sunflower sprouts or like raw greens on top of a cooked meal, that's totally fine. If you like to have cooked foods and then like your raw foods later, I know it's kind of backwards in America. We usually eat salads first and then a cooked meal. Um, you'd be better off either eating it like together or um, or leave your your raw astringent greens for actually after your hot cooked foods because um, they're just a, a little bit harder to digest. Um, and juicing meals. Um, so I didn't talk about it, but in the book they do talk about, and we learned at Bowman, our holistic nutrition school, that chewing like your the texture of your food actually does have an impact on neurogenesis and your um, cognitive ability. So, you know, having foods that are just in a cup that you're drinking is actually not going to be a benefit to you. Uh, if you have to do it like once in a while because it's faster and easier for you because you're on the go or something, you don't have time to cook stuff and you got to just throw in a blender, maybe okay. But like, I would not advise to have um, a juiced or blended meal regularly because chewing on stuff is quite important and linked to your health, your brain health. Right. And, you know, um, Chantal and I both went to the same school and she practices from an Ayurvedic lens, which is where she's kind of went to. And I'm, I'm an, an integrative um, holistic lens. So we practice similarly, but a little bit different. And um, yeah, that question, I was reading it. And, and number one, there is no perfect way of eating for one person. This yeah. doesn't, it does not exist. It does not exist. We all have different needs. Um, but yes, there there is importance in chewing your food. There is importance in having whole foods. And I love a good juice. Don't get me wrong when it's in the summer, you can give me some beet juice. Oh my goodness, it's so refreshing. But it's not, in in my humble opinion, it's not the way that we want to live with consuming our foods. Um, and eating, eating is, is, eating is a, is a ritual. It's, it's special, right? We want to connect with our foods and we want to give thanks to our foods and our foods are met are made perfectly for us they're made that the way that they're made with the different fibers and the different skins and different they're made that way for a reason and so consume them and enjoy them but that was a really great question thank you for that um all right it looks like we are out of time Thank you so much for showing up and we really hope to see you in class this weekend for some immune health, get you into Reiki so you can do some healing, you can heal the world. And then we see you next Wednesday. So Chantal can keep teaching us all the different ways we can keep our brains healthy. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. You will be receiving a thank you email shortly. It will have all of Chantal's um contact information and then of course if you need anything from me melissa at banyanwomen.org i'm here to serve you everyone have a blessed night take care stay warm have some green tea tomorrow not tonight have some soup tonight. okay <laughs> thank you thanks guys can I ask you a question oh yeah yeah, yeah um so is is cumin the same as tumor a uh, quick cumin the same as turmeric if i have turmeric is will that take place Will, will that be okay without the yeah q sorry curcumin is the active compound in turmeric it's just the specific nutrient or compound that is that in turmeric getting from the turmeric okay, yeah so if I have the turmeric that that will be the same. yes okay. but if you're eating turmeric remember consume it either with like lecithin or black pepper or piperine which is a black pepper extract Okay. To be able to absorb the curcumin. Yeah. Easiest thing is just have some and fresh black pepper, cracked fresh black pepper with your, okay. your turmeric. Just make okay. that a habit. Even if you're having like a milk latte, put a little black pepper in there for the spice. Yeah. Okay.
can I quickly add then, probably if you're using tea, the tea makers probably thought of that. And so I don't need to think about that black pepper, right? Usually, like, uh, you know, you like have the healthy look- tea creators, you know, like I have this nice, healthy turmeric uh, blend. And I'm you should look at the, the ingredients. Blend. Not all the mm, time. Okay. Exactly yeah. like what I was going to say. Not all the time. Uh, turmeric has become such a selling point yeah. um, that that is something that I often do not see with it. So if you find a good blend that comes with all that, share it, let us know, but just always look at your ingredients. Cause to my knowledge, it's not something I usually have to add it. I was like, I have one. I sell one. If you guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, if you take the geek class, we're going to be doing a contest with her spices. So another reason to learn how to make geek. Yeah. That's a great question though. Does anybody else have anything else? No, no. Okay. Thank all you right. all so much. Thanks Thank so much. everyone. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Take Have care. a good night. Good night. It's like, should I leave or stay on? <laughs> just um, just a second. Oh, Nita, did you have a question? Oh, her hand was up. Nita, did you have a question? Oh, you're on mute, oh. sweetie. Unmute yourself. Oh. No, I'm sorry. Good night. Oh, no question? Okay. No. All right. Take care. Good night. Bye. You too. Take care. Bye. Oh, great, great. Um